Right. How to hold festive dinners uh, but still meet the cost of living challenges. That's what we're talking about next. This yes. new poll has found that nine in ten of us are just as content being served microwave meals from the shops as we are with a gourmet home-cooked meal. And eight in ten of us say arriving with a bottle of wine for the host is totally unnecessary. So is this the right way to do it as the cost of living crisis continues to ramp up? Let's ask etiquette coach William Hansen um, a lesson on how to do this on a budget because, quite frankly, there are... You know, you can't really turn up if somebody's providing you with a meal empty-handed, but if we're all feeling the squeeze, how do you do a dinner party on a budget? Uh, well, yeah, the, the hostess gift one is an interesting one because I would always say turn up with something, but it doesn't have to be that expensive, even if it's something you've made, some homemade biscuits or something with your own sugar, flour and butter, mm. which should be relatively cheap or certainly cheaper than a, a bottle of wine. Uh, but if not, if you don't turn up with something, write them a nice thank you letter. Cost, mm. cost of a stamp and a little card uh, and, and actually being being grateful. But the idea with the dinner party as opposed to sort of going out to a, to a restaurant is that if I have, let's say, the both of you over and I cook for you and I provide the meal, you then, within about six months, then have me to your respective houses and I mm. then get two free meals, as it were, off the back of that... Mm. And it's sort of that's how it's meant to, to work itself out. And this sort of reciprocity, I think, has been lost a little bit. People don't necessarily understand that if I have you over, you have me over, or if you can't have me over, then you take me out for a meal, or even if it's just breakfast, just sitting in a cafe, a high street cafe having a croissant. So there's no such thing as a free dinner party. You are no, expected exactly. to return, return the, the favour, fair place. enough. You all right with, with microwave meals? Because I, I, cause I, I can buy in a great macaroni cheese if you're Lovely. interested. Lovely. Good. Well, you do that. That's fine. I would be absolutely fine with whatever you served me. Um, but, uh, I mean, I don't have a microwave, so you won't be getting a microwave meal at, at mine, unless you can heat it through in the oven. Right. Um, but I think, but actually the point, I think, with the microwave meal is that actually food is important at a dinner party, but it's not the most important thing. The, the more important thing is just having a nice time and the atmosphere and how, how your guests are feeling, not what you serve them. And I think programmes like Come Dine With Me have perhaps sort of skewed it rather unfairly to, and too much pressure that people feel the need to do this gorgeous concoction of, of food. And actually, very rarely do you remember what you ate. <laughs> yeah, just a plate of twiglets, to be Well, fair. as my parents have got older, to be fair, it sort of overwhelms my mum, the mm. thought of preparing a dinner party for eight friends. So what they've got into the habit of doing yeah. with their little circle of friends is to do sort of six o'clock drinks with nibbles. So they'll do some little nice. smoked salmon. Yeah. And, and instead, that's less pressure on mum, less washing up. Yep. Um, and they, they've got that little system going, which I think is quite a nice way of getting around it if mm. it's overwhelming, because that can be... One of the things, mm. isn't it? You spend all day Saturday chopping when you've been at work all, all week and then all day Sunday clearing up. Yes, and I think it's also how you brand the, the evening as well. If you call it come round for a kitchen supper, for example, already the pressure's off. Kitchen supper, certainly to me, it's sort of a lasagna or something, a masaka, stick it in the middle of the table, maybe serve some cheese afterwards. You haven't really had to sort of prepare that. Um, and just have a nice time with a, with a bottle of wine rather than a dinner party, which yeah. perhaps sort of invokes the candlelight supper mm. uh, type of thing with, yeah. with all sorts of... Yeah, uh, that, that re re reciprocity, I think I've said mm. right. Reciprocity. Yeah, reciprocity that you were talking about when it comes to... It, it, it kind of alludes to what uh, Martin Lewis was talking about a few days ago when it comes to present buying, which is maybe have an agreement not to buy presents so you don't have to then buy them for everyone else and in that way you cut down. Should we yeah. be thinking about that when it comes to entertaining at all? Yes, yeah. Be, be, just communicate if you're not bringing something, saying, oh, uh, and you don't have to bring anything, that said. I mean, it is the expectation. I would say most hosts think that, think that you probably would turn up with something. You can send something afterwards or, as I say, just a nice letter, uh, enthuse about the party and get a date in the diary pretty quickly to, to get them back. Do you think it would be sad if Britain started to see the, the back of dinner parties, the death of dinner parties, as it's being declared in, in some corners? Oh, completely, yes, because I think you can... There's, you know, even from a business point of view, sometimes there's a lot of soft business that goes on. Well, the Camerons famously parties. hosted yes. these Notting Hill, uh, what do you call them, kitchen suppers, didn't yeah. they? Exactly that. We heard about Cameron in his number 11 Downing Street yeah. flat having the Notting Hill set round for a slap-up kitchen supper. And as you yeah. say, look, or the Bamfords or whoever coming round yeah. and, and deals being done. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, so there's a lot of, sort of soft diplomacy that, that can happen over a, a kitchen supper or a dinner party. I don't think it's the death of them. I think it's all cyclical. I think it, they will come back in, in the end. Um, hopefully, if the cost of living crisis abates, then, then I think sort of people will go back to that. 
Um, because actually, there is nothing nicer, and it's fairly priceless just having a nice time with a group of friends. The, the ultimate dinner party, of course, Christmas Day. I mean, everybody has okay. one of those, yeah. don't they? And you can't mm. ever wave goodbye to that. We can't mm. be having microwave meals on Christmas Day, can we? Can we? Well, some people have to. Some people have to, yeah. Uh, and again, if, if, you, if you're not a very good cook, if you don't want to do it, you, you're working on Christmas Day, then yes, um, just stick something in the microwave or the oven that, you, that sort of pre yeah. Or fine. the air fryer. Oh, yes, yes. Well, they're very popular. Yeah. Turkey. Right. Yes. Come round to my. That's it. It's sort of rage at the moment, isn't it? But it, I mean, there's a. I'm saying it's the rage. It's a, there is a practical point that why it's so popular, isn't there? But yeah. you could you could invite people around for an air fryer meal. Yes, I would just make sure you've practiced. <laughs> you don't you don't want to sort of mess up the turkey in the air fryer on Christmas Day. If you've only got one turkey. Have yeah, a practice. Have a dry yeah, run. Yeah, there's a shortage of turkeys as well, so it's not okay. like you can get a, a spare one. William Hanson, executive director of the English Manor and Etiquette Coach. Thank you very much Thank you indeed. Both. Thank you. Thank you.